Namaste, namaste and welcome to this short video practice. Today we're going to use a little bit of extra support to help us do half moon pose, Ardha Chandrasana. There are in fact two poses in yoga that are called Ardha Chandrasana. Uh, one of them is a lunge pose, but this one is the pose where we stand on one leg and we stick our arms and legs out. So I will um, take you through a short limbering practice and then we'll do this pose together. So I find it really useful to help um, use the, the support of a chair for this limbering, but you can equally use a wall or you can do it freestanding if you wish. So come into stand by support if you need it, fingertip touch or a little bit firmer if you prefer. I've got my right leg standing next to the chair, so I'm going to use my left leg as my swinging leg first, standing really tall, finding that, that sense of lift, organizing itself all the way up the body, then freeing the left leg from the floor and just swinging it backwards and forwards. Sorry, I'm sucking a sweet because I've got a bit of a tickly throat at the moment. Please excuse me. So we're going to here focus on firming the center of the body, finding that inner lift so that we're not swinging our whole bodies around, but it's the leg itself that is swinging. We're trying to find a little bit of joyful movement here. So the leg is quite long, quite straight, doesn't need to be rigid. And then when you're ready, you can bring your legs together and just do a little gentle hip circling, just a few in each direction. And then we're going to take the opportunity to stand on both feet, just give our hips a little bit of a wiggle or a shake out, particularly the standing leg, which tends to do a lot of the work and practice the same to the other side. I'm going to use this handy wall. Um, so it's taking the weight now onto the left leg, standing tall and swinging the right leg, finding a little bit of freedom of movement there. If you really want to be fancy, you can point your toes forwards and flex your heels backwards. The important thing is to stand really tall, opening the chest, keeping that centered support through your core. And then when you're ready, you can bring the knees to more to stillness and circle a few times in each direction with the knee. There's no need to do the biggest possible circles. It's just about lubricating, moving, preparing. Standing onto both legs, just giving the hips a little bit of a wiggle uh, or the legs a little bit of a shake out. We're going to come back to our first side and do a little bit of cross body action. So in yoga and in life actually, we tend to do an awful lot of uh, uh, front and back through this plane of movement. And fortunately in yoga, we do a lot of out to the side as well but in life we tend not to. So this is a nice movement to do. You can add it to your daily practice. Standing on your right leg and just taking your left leg out to the side, swinging it across in front of the body. And it's the out to the side movement that's important. So swinging across the body is fine. That's a nice to have. But if you just bring it to center and that's enough for you or just slightly in front of the body, that's fine too. And then we're going to take this movement behind the body, but we're going to place the left foot to the floor, just do a little curtsy and then release out. Little curtsy. And there is in fact a squat called the curtsy squat. This is probably approaching that. Um, but here we're focused on the effort required to take the leg out to the side from this behind the body situation. Let's do one more and then bring the feet together. Just feel the difference between the two sides of the body. Give it a march if it needs a march, give it a shake if it needs a shake. And we'll do a forward bend to stretch out in just a moment. Supporting now the left side of the body to take the right leg across the body, out to the side, in front of the body, and back out to the side. Here again, just like with our legs swinging forwards and backwards, we're trying to keep the the rest of the body fairly stable, stabilizing and strengthening. So that's what we're aiming for. And then we go behind the body, just that gentle curtsy, both knees bent as we step the foot behind the body, if that's possible, or just simply one foot behind the other, 
Remembering it's the leg moving out to the side that is the movement that we're really focused on. Let's do one more. And then resting the feet back down to the floor. It feels so good to have both feet on the floor when you've done any single leg standing work. So once we've done that practice, we can use our chairs that are handy to do a forward bending uh, like a down dog practice. So resting your hands on your chair, walking your feet away from you. Nice wide feet, soft knees, lengthen the hips backwards and keeping the uh, knees nice and soft, wiggling the hips from side to side if that feels good. If you like to work a little bit lower, you can take your hands to the floor or just a little bit lower to the chair seat. Doing what feels good in this moment. If you like to take the crown of the head to the floor, you can even turn the head from side to side and you can do that at any stage in the practice, any height of support. When you're ready, we're going to walk our way back upright. So coming back through the support to stand all the way up, rolling the shoulders, just making sure that you feel good in your body before we go any further. So I'm going to move my chair a little bit here so I can stand on the other side of it. And we're going to use uh, several different kinds of posture to come into this practice. So the first posture that we're going to use is triangle pose, trikonasana. So we're going to stand with the feet nice and wide. I've got the chair on the left side of my body and I'm going to turn my left foot to point towards the chair seat. I want a little bit of space between my foot and the chair seat itself. My legs are nice and wide. The back foot is parallel to the end of the mat, should I have a mat, um, but it's parallel to the, the, or perpendicular, sorry, to the direction of focus. Here, you don't have to over square your hips to the, the, the front where your chest is pointing, but perhaps just let them fall, fall about halfway. So get away from those old alignment cues for hips. We don't need to do that at all. What we do need to do is feel strength in the buttocks, Feel that we're drawing the energy of the legs up from the feet to the hips, to the crown of the head, and that we're strong across the feet. So maybe wiggle your toes and spread them out a little bit. Find the outside edges of your feet. Find a switch on of the muscles of the legs. We're gonna take the arms out at shoulder height, reach them away from each other. Just look along your arm and make sure that it's not like doing something odd at the back there. And then focusing on your front uh, arm, leaning over the front leg, leaning over the left leg. And we're going to take our left hand down to the chair seat and reach the right arm up and over. And to stabilize here, we really need to be focused on this back hip and buttock really working to keep us from collapsing all the way forwards. So that's where we, we reach up out of. And then to come into warrior three from here, we're going to, not warrior three, to come into half moon from here, we're going to bend the front knee and just hop that back foot in a little bit, press into the left hand, and then we lift the right leg up behind us. And at the same time, we're pressing into both the left hand and foot and perhaps drawing the shoulder blades towards each other. And here we're just breathing, just a couple of deep breaths. If you wish to, you can look slightly forwards or slightly up, whatever it's good for your balance. And then we come out the way we went in, we're bending the front knee, just reaching the right, hand, right foot to the floor, and then turn the right palm, press through the front leg and come up to standing. Turning in the left foot, and here we can scissor the feet together or lightly hop the feet together, whichever you prefer. And in the center, taking a moment, you might like to march in place, or you might like to wiggle anything that needs wiggling. Very good. So that's our trikonasana triangle entry. Um, and we can do the same thing, but come into it from warrior one. So here we face the chair. We don't want to get super close. Again, we want to leave a little bit of space because of that shift of the weight forwards. Stepping back with the right foot, 
So we've got both feet facing the chair and we've got, uh, we can start with lengthening the front legs, oh, the both legs, and then bending the front knee as we press into the back heel, reaching the arms up, opening the chest, lifting in the belly, and then we fold forward to the seat, placing both hands down, and then transfer our weight forward into the left leg, finding that the, the right heel is free and then lifting the right leg up. Leave both hands down and just see if you can turn your chest and your hips to that right, uh, to that center side, right side. Very good. We're gonna press into the left hand and just see if we can bring the right hand to the right hip. A little softness in the standing leg and then just see if the shoulders will turn a little bit to the right. And then flexing through the right heel, just see if the whole body will move just a little bit more to the right. You can lengthen your left arm if it helps. Breathing, this is quite hard to hold. I actually find it easier to hold with the leg a little bit higher, maybe you will too. And then to come out of it, we return back to center, step the right foot to the floor, bend the left knee and come back into warrior one and then release the arms down as we straighten the legs, turn to the side. So both feet pointing forwards, scissor the feet in or lightly hop the feet together, whichever you prefer. So a slightly different way of getting into it. I'm not sure which one I really prefer, um, but I'm going to give you one final option to come into it from warrior three. So this one, we also do a down dog. We're using our chair to come into warrior three. So a reasonable distance away from your chair. We're going to breathe in and take the arms up and breathe out as we fold forward and place the hands down, soften the knee so we can let the hips come backwards a little bit and find a little forward bend. It's not really a full down dog. It's kind of quite soft. We're going to just lighten the load on the right heel so we can step the right foot back. Keep a little bit of effort in the arms, the belly and the buttocks. And then lengthen the left leg and lift the right leg at the same time, coming into a variation of warrior three. And then here we place the left hand down, same process, onto the fingertips of the right hand, rolling the hips to the right side, rolling the shoulders a little bit to the right side, flexing that right heel, and then seeing if we can find a bit of support, softness in the left knee. We're just trying to lift the right hand to the right hip, and then see if we can twist in our upper bodies. I find this really teetery. Firming the back of the body, maybe even lifting the right arm up, taking a few breaths, and then whenever you're ready, coming back, both hands onto the feet to find warrior three, take the right foot to the floor, and then you can step the right foot forward and find that forward bend, that almost downward dog forward bend. To come up, maybe rounding through the spine from here. To stand tall, take the arms over the head and finish with the hands together at the heart. So we've done all three variations with our left standing leg and right moving leg, and we can swap ourselves around and do the same thing on the other side. Now, if you find that the chair is not quite high enough, you can use the additional um, uh, elevation of a block or a sturdy book at the front of your seat, and that will really help. Or if you find the chair is just a bit too high, you'd like to um, come into this with just a little bit more challenge for your level, you can of course take your block to the floor and work to the block on the floor once you've used the chair as sort of an access point, as you choose. So we're going to start with Trikonasana as our entry point, triangle pose. We stand with the feet nice and wide, we don't want to be super close to the chair, feet nice and wide, and we're turning the right foot to point towards the chair, and then lengthening both legs, making sure the back foot in is the best alignment for our trikonasana. Don't over square the hips. We reach the arms nice and wide, reach into the fingertips, making sure that back arm isn't pointing in an odd direction, drawing the shoulders down, 
I'm going to lean over towards the right, <laughs> over towards the chair. And then we just want to bend that front knee and place the hand down on the chair. We're going to hop our back leg in just a little so that we can press into the right foot and arm and lift the left leg up behind us. The left arm is already up. All we have to do here is really firm the back of the body to find that sideways motion. Breathing and holding. And then when you're ready, you can lightly step the left foot to the floor, turn the left palm and come up to Trikonasana or come up through warrior three, oh, two, sorry, it's Trikonasana and release the arms down to the side. Aces, turning both feet forward, either scissor the feet in or lightly hop the feet together. Take a moment here, you might like to march it out or shimmer or shake something that feels good for doing that. And I have to say, I think that that is the traditional entry. I think it is my favorite entry. Um, it seems to offer me the most stable uh, Ardha Chandrasana half moon pose. But it's good to practice in different ways. It opens us to new possibilities and we can all obviously marry different postures together if we have different opportunities to do that. So from warrior one, stepping the right foot forward and the left foot back, want a little bit of space between the front foot and the chair. We're squaring the hips-ish to the front, reaching the arms up and softening down, really bending into that front leg and pressing into the outside edge of the back leg. We are reaching forward towards the chair. We're going to take both hands down first. And it's that same process of taking lightness into the left heel so that we can transfer the weight into the right leg and come into this sort of one leg variation. We're leaving the right hand down and we're tenting the fingertips of the left hand and just trying to turn the hips and possibly the chest a little bit to that left side. Pressing down as much as feels comfortable, maybe taking the hand to the hips, left hand to the left hip, and seeing if we can dial open the chest a little bit more. Sometimes it helps to lift the left leg just a little bit more, keeping softness in that front leg. To come out, come back to the seat, release the left leg down behind us, find warrior one, and then lengthen the front leg. We can release the arms down to the side, turn both feet to point to the long side of your space, and then sit with the feet in or lightly jump the feet together. Very good. So our final variation, coming in from a sort of chair-based down dog into warrior three, into that Ardha Chandrasana. I sometimes have to play a little bit with the alignment, I have to admit, I'm less stable in this one. I fell out of it doing, doing it just earlier in a class. So um, not a bad fall, just a little fall. So just noticing if that is the case with you as well. Feet a reasonable distance from the chair, taking the arms out and up and then folding forward to find this lengthened position of the low back and the tailbone so that our hips are behind our heels. And here, we're also going to transfer the weight slightly forward, lifting the left leg and sliding it slightly back. We want to lift the left leg up and take the weight a little bit more forward. I may have my chair in slightly the wrong place. Moving the right hand down. And here, we're trying to dial the hips and the chest to the left again. So I want a little bit of light finger touch with the left hand just to find that space and real firmness in the back of the body, taking the left hand to the left hip, rolling the shoulder blades towards each other, seeing if we can just open a little bit further to the left, maybe even playing with the height of the left leg. If you want to, reaching the left arm up into the air, really finding strength in the back of the body. And when you're ready to release, coming back down to the chair, Stepping your foot down, then bringing it back in to do your chair down with dog. And maybe here you'd like to come all the way into a deeper forward bend. Give yourself a little wiggle and then rounding up or hinging up to standing. So I hope you've enjoyed these different variations of Ardha Chandrasana and hope you found an entry point 
that feels the best for you. It's really important that when we learn poses in yoga, the entry and exit of a pose is the first thing that we should learn to do with confidence before moving into holding a pose and then breathing in a pose and then focusing on the energy movement in a pose. So I really hope that you found something that works for you. Uh, if you feel that you need to now, it's quite good to cross the legs. There's been a lot of action on the outside of the thighs. So you could either come into a seated pose and cross your legs and do a nice little spinal twist here, or possibly cross them like this, do a little forward bend as well, and a little twist to either side. Or you might try Garudasana the eagle pose, where the legs and arms cross. I'll leave you to find your own counter pose, the one that suits you the best. I'll practice to see you again soon. Namaste.